eternal and beautiful. The phoenix represents hope and life in the face of calamity and destruction. There is no greater symbol for man's indomitable will. A breathtaking creature. The phoenix is a large, beautiful, eagle-like bird, standing out from the surrounding environment, as well as other birds, through its striking red and yellow coloration. Though it is also sometimes depicted as being more of a peacock, with neon feathers adorning its body. The phoenix is additionally a very long-lived creature, having a lifespan anywhere from 500 to 1,000 years. The most notable aspect of this creature, and indeed the reason this myth is so famous, lies in the phoenix's ability to regenerate, and the singular manner in which it does so. As the phoenix approaches its death, it is consumed by flames of such degree that its whole body is turned to ash. From these ashes, a new phoenix is born. Myths vary as to the exact nature of this rebirth, as some hold that the phoenix must first transform into an egg during this process, while other, more modern depictions, sees a phoenix chick crawling directly from the sash. As a result of this remarkable method of self-renewal, the phoenix has grown a close association with the sun, bringing hope right when the night seems longest, representing the triumph of life and goodness over the endless blackness. The myth of the phoenix is deeply specific as to the surrounding factors in which this rebirth occurs. Supposedly residing in Arabia, the phoenix will fly to Heliopolis in Egypt, where it will immolate, and from these ashes, a worm will crawl forth and grow into a new phoenix. However, some versions of the myth find the phoenix building an egg of myrrh, wherein it places its parent phoenix for the parent's eventual rebirth, while others hold that it doesn't simply spontaneously ignite, Rather, it builds for itself a pyre from various spices upon which it burns. What's more is that due to its unnatural method of self-perpetuation, it does not engage in normal breeding. Consequently, later phoenix myths hold that there is only ever one phoenix at a time, as it does not reproduce itself. The phoenix has also gained other revitalizing abilities. Its tears can heal any wound and cure any affliction, while its feathers have the ability to reverse death itself. A less considered part of the phoenix myth is man's eternal pursuit of the bird as he seeks to attain the beautiful feathers of the phoenix for himself. However, this effort is in vain as the phoenix is impossible to capture, being far too fast and far too intelligent for anyone to outthink or outrun. This pursuit of the phoenix has come to hold a more metaphorical association, representing humanity's eternal search for immortality, striving for the bird's feathers as a pale shadow of the true thing. The phoenix is found quite frequently in popular culture. Although this creature is not referred to directly, references to aspects of this myth are quite common, most notably the concept and turn of phrase to rise from ashes, which is commonly reserved for speeches given in dire straits in action films and the like. Indeed, the most frequent mentions of the phoenix is the reference to how this creature is reborn, with many poems, films, books, and plays using it as a symbol of a character's rebirth. It is a conveniently neutral alternative to Christ symbols for rebirth. The most common manner in which this idea of rebirth finds itself depicted is with the subtle or overt addition of fiery wings to the background of a character. Outright depictions of the phoenix are, like this bird of myth, fleeting and rare. Appearing shortly in Harry Potter as its most prominent and direct depiction, the phoenix finds its home more in fantasy novels and various gaming outlets as a powerful creature often invoking an event of deus ex machina though it does also have many analogues that are less frequently addressed. Since the phoenix is usually given a proud and noble demeanor, its direct depictions usually portray it as being deserving of awe. Consequently, it has come to represent power and nobility, appearing often in insignia and heraldry. Interestingly, there is little doubt as to the mythical status of the phoenix, and as such, it's often used in culture to simply indicate faith that we shall remain undefeated, no matter what the universe may throw at us. In ancient times, 
The phoenix was a symbol of light and the sun. Many stories related to this bird often concentrate on its relationship with the sun. Because of this ubiquitous symbolism, we find variations of the phoenix all over the world. But this wasn't the only meaning the phoenix held, as it gains more symbolism the further back in time we venture. Obedience, loyalty, and faith are but a few of the meanings this bird has come to hold, and this is why we see it making its way into heraldry and various other decorations. It is plain to see that as a cultural icon, the phoenix is of significant importance. As far as history can show, the oldest version of the phoenix can be found in the Egyptian Bennu bird, which archaeologists have linked to a now extinct species of heron. The Egyptians believed that the universe began with the cry of this bird and, due to their culture's fixation on immortality, came to hold this long-lived bird in high regard. However, the Arabic phoenix is the most popular version in modern times and is almost instantly recognizable as the most frequent depiction of the phoenix. It is derived from the Egyptian phoenix and has hardly changed much at all. Ancient Greece describes the Nimbus, a large purple bird with a fiery crest, and further east we find the Chinese Feng Huang, with the various depictions of this bird claiming that it fed on dewdrops and was almost weightless. The Japanese version deviates from the more western myths by having the phoenix occur in pairs, the male Ho-Oh and the female Ho-U, which were said to bring gifts and good fortune to the people of the world. With all of these depictions, it is strange to discover that one specific origin for all these variations is lacking. One would think that mutated stories of a single creature might birth this myth in a similar manner to the unicorn. However, there appears to be no real-world analogue. Indeed, the association of such a specific animal, a bird, with the sun, while logical, is nevertheless difficult to explain how such a specific proliferation may come about. Perhaps the extinct heron species upon which the Benu bird may be based was quite a far-ranged animal, occurring in many parts of the world. Considering that this Benu bird went extinct around 5000 BC, this hypothesis may hold some truth, as this is more than enough time for something real to pass into myth. The phoenix is a surprisingly simple creature to explain as it bears only two major aspects to its myth, a fiery rebirth and generalized healing properties. Initially, the explanation for the rebirth of the phoenix sees us calling upon parthenogenesis, which is a form of asexual reproduction. Although not very common amongst more structurally complex animals, this method of reproduction is still seen in birds, namely the chicken. However, its parthenogenically produced eggs do not often create viable embryos. There are several mechanisms for parthenogenesis, the most common being the formation of a diploid gamete cell before or after meiosis. However, gamete fusion of two normal ova can occur spontaneously after these cells are formed. It should be mentioned that most of the time the animals produced by parthenogenesis are female, and consequently the phoenix shall be as well, altering the supposed gender of this mythical creature from exclusively male to exclusively female. To further add to the myth of the phoenix, in 2004, researchers at the Tokyo University of Agriculture were able to induce parthenogenesis in mice. The resulting offspring had significantly longer lifespans than their parents. With this information in mind, the amazingly long life of the phoenix may also be explained. What's more is that there exist several obligate parthenogenesis species, such as geckos or salamanders, therefore proving that this reproductive strategy is still viable for larger, more complex creatures, which may also include the phoenix. The second part of the phoenix reproductive cycle sees the bird immolating during the laying of its egg. The purpose of the self-immolation is difficult to contrive, however, reasons may nevertheless be found. Two potential reasons include, firstly, that this immolation serves to protect the vulnerable egg of the phoenix and that the parent's carcass would then form a protective husk for the chick to grow in, or, secondly, and most likely, the hatching process of the phoenix egg only begins when the egg is exposed to high temperatures and in this manner necessitating the self-immolation of the phoenix. The manner in which this creature immolates remains a curiosity until we take a closer look at the myth to see that the bird collects spices and gums with which to build its nest. Combined with the heat of Arabia and Egypt, the home of the phoenix, the resulting buildup of oils and inflammable materials in the feathers of the phoenix leaves it prone to spontaneous combustion, with the various oils creating a wick effect in a manner similar to current theories on spontaneous human combustion. And finally, 
the healing properties of the phoenix tears and feathers can easily be attributed to the self-same collection of spices and gums, forming an antiseptic balm depending on the materials the phoenix may collect, with the residue of this balm collecting in the lacrimal secretions of the bird. Of course, this explanation is a little too convenient. Perhaps you can think of a better reason for the healing properties in the comments below. At last, it is surprising to find that the phoenix, while still a myth, is not at all entirely impossible to reify. While it remains a symbol of hope the world over, it is fascinating to think that there could well have been some animal that shared these remarkable aspects.